while completing his bachelor's degree in finance and accounting at the University of Southern California, Ivan knew that an emphasis in real estate was his passion. Uh, he began his career as a CPA in one of the most prestigious firms in the country and started his career in real estate in the year 2007. Today, he is a top real estate agent at the Douglas Elliman Beverly Hills office. He also has a thriving team of his own, the Ivan Estrada Properties. Uh, he was the luxury director at Keller Williams Hollywood Hills and had received a top producer award for t from 2012 to 2015 and top 10 at Douglas Elliman Beverly Hills for 2016. Um, he has recently been honored with the Media Out Loud Award for Business of the Year and most honorably received the title of Top 30 Under 30 in Real Estate in the Nation in 2014. He has also established himself, as I said, very well um, by becoming a member on several boards and has been able to successfully market his business, unlike, almost unlike any other, with a widespread presence on social media, such as YouTube and Facebook. Because of his comprehensive network, he has been featured on Bravo's Million Dollar Listing and HGTV's House Hunters as a Los Angeles television personality. He credits his hard work and success extensive ne to success, extensive networking, integrity, and putting his clients' interests first. He is always trying to be part of the solution. He believes the only way to face challenges is head on and to focus on the positive. By treating everyone in business as a trusted friend, Ivan has built up a sterling reputation, both as an honorable business person and a reliable per partner. Simply stated, Ivan makes deals happen. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Ivan Estrada. I was like, wait, that's me? <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I have a little issue with my throat, which I'll talk about later, but um, I'm just super excited to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very honored. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So I grew up with uh, Mexican immigrant parents. Uh, they grew up in Mexico City. They moved here when they were in their 20s. Uh, I grew up in an area called Eagle Rock, which is near Pasadena, Glendale area. That's where I was raised. And of course, very st stereotypical Mexican family. Um, you know, growing up, my mom and my dad, here's the thing. My mom and my dad are my biggest inspiration because growing up, they were so stringent and so rigid with us. And so you got to do your homework. you got to do this. you got to go to school. And, you know, I used to just sit there and be like, God, I hate them. Why are they making us do this? And, you know, I just, uh, my mom, you know, growing up in a family of farmers, she wanted us to be successful, my sister and I. So I um, graduated high school. I attended USC. I got into the Marshall School of Business and the Leventhal School of Accounting, and I was one out of five Latino accounting students in the entire school, which was amazing. I finished fifth year in, two uh, degrees, and went to work for Deloitte, uh, which was a huge accomplishment for my family, for myself. I think more for my family, because I think at the end of the day, I was doing something that they wanted me to do. Um, so. I was in accounting for almost three and a half years, and I woke up one day and just realized, wow, I hate my life. This sucks. <laughs> and I used to wake up every single morning, get out of bed and go, oh shit. Like, that was what was coming out of my mouth every single day. And, and I realized, wow, I'm not, I'm not living my dream. I'm not living my passion. I used to go into my cubicle and just daydream and think, what else would I be doing? Like, I, I hate my job every day. I'm good at what I do, but it's just not fulfilling me within. I'm not living my dream. I lived my parents' dream. As much as I love them and as much as I respected them, and as much as my success is because of their upbringing, I just wasn't happy with the person that I'd become and who I was. And so I uh, went on to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? And I, I actually watched season one of Million Dollar Listing, and I watched this show, and I'm like, Wow, this looks fun. I can totally do this. <laughs> and so um, I, um, I went and I got an internship at a, at a firm, uh, Hilton and Highland, and I did it for a week, and I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And I'm like, how am I going to break it to my parents? Because they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. And so in my idea of being a real estate agent was, I used to remember my mom's friends, and baking cookies, putting the signs out, and just, you know, chanting like comadres, right? Like all day long at these open houses. And so I was just, okay, I gotta tell them I'm gonna do it. Um, I left my job, didn't tell anybody, and I 
told my parents, uh, I just uh, left my job at Deloitte and uh, I'm going to be a real estate agent. And I just remember this look on my mom and dad's face of like, oh my God, what did you do? And um, at the beginning, I didn't have their support. I didn't have anybody's support. My colleagues, my friends, my family, everyone had said, you made a huge mistake. Like, you were the first one out of your family to go to college, you graduated, you were top of the firm that you were at, and you just threw it all away. You threw it all away. And I remember sitting there and thinking, I'm gonna show them. Like, I'm gonna show them how different I'm gonna do real estate. I'm gonna show them how I'm gonna treat this as a business and not like an, as an agent. And I'm gonna be the best agent that I could be. And so, in order to do that, um, I left my job, so of course there's no money in the bank. I had picked up a job as a server, as a waiter. I've never waited tables before. I used to work at a company called Patina in downtown. I used to work there from 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. And I used to get to the office from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I did that for two years. And I remember waiting <coughs> tables and just thinking, wow, like, I hope I've made the right decision. You know, I went to college, I have these two degrees, I have a CPA license, and, and now I'm waiting tables. And you know, I was waiting tables for the Emmys and the Oscars, and some of these people are not the nicest people in the world. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, like, if this doesn't work out, I can't go to my parents and say, you know, I made a huge mistake, or I can't go to my friends and say, you were right. And I said, you know, there's, I have to do this. Like, I have to do this for myself. I have to do this for my community as well, that I can do it. Because when I got into real estate, Beverly Hills, I was, you know, I grew up in a lower income family in, in, in Eagle Rock. We, you know, my parents made like probably forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and these agents were, you know, sons of millionaires and billionaires and celebrities, and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I, I'm not like them. I'm also, there's no Latino people over here. It's all white people. I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I literally put a plan together. A plan of like, there's no, the no excuse plan. This is the plan, this is what I'm gonna do every single day in order to get where I need to go. No excuses, I'm, kinda, I'm gonna take away all the noise of all the people that are saying you can't do it, you were never born raised in Beverly Hills, you weren't born with wealth, your parents are not celebrities, you're not gonna be able to be top of anything. And I just remember for, I mean, almost three years, I, I waited tables and it actually, grounded me a little bit and it made me realize a little bit about myself and who I am and what I really wanted. Um, and now fast forward a little bit on time, you know, four or five years into it and things were changing. You know, the, I, I had stuck to a plan. I work out in the morning, waking up early is a huge factor in my life. I wake up at five in the morning, I go to the gym and I meditate. I get myself in this mindset of what do I want today? What do I want today to look like? Because if you don't visualize that, you're not gonna really get it. And, and uh, you know, like there's this, uh, the movie, um, what is it, uh, The Laws of Attraction. You know, I truly believe in that. You know, I have this board in my bedroom, I have it in my office, I have it on my phone as my screensaver. What do I want my day to look like? What do I want my month to look like? What do I want my life to look like? And so, you know, now I'm top 1% in the country in real estate. I've used uh, my team, I have an amazing team, and that's the thing, you need to have an amazing support system. I have amazing friends, I have an amazing family who now supports me, and my mom's like, oh my God, look at what my son did, look at what my son did. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you know, if I hadn't believed in myself, and really just planned this out, and really kind of given me no excuses, you know, I don't care, I went to a point where I had $500 in my bank account, and I was like, I don't care. I'm still going to go out there and knock on doors, make those phone calls, and put on a happy face when I become a server and serve people food every single night. Um, and you know, I've just I've been able to learn so much about myself, about others, um, be able to be compassionate about others. Now that I'm in the position that I am, um, I'm on boards. I'm on the board of the Natural History Museum, which was huge to me because growing up, you know. Uh, learning about science, you know, coming from a Latino background, my parents are like, oh, I don't care about the dinosaurs, I don't care about science. I'm like, <laughs> because it, it's interesting about learning and expanding my brain as, as a person. And so now, you know, every time I close a deal, I give back to charity, um, I'm on these boards. Every, de every deal that I close, I tell my clients, I'm going to give a, per a percentage back of my commission, where do you want it to go? You know, everyone has, there's cancer, there's uh, kids with autism, 
Um, you know, there's HIV. There's all these different things that people, all of us here are affected by it. And so I also, I always want to give back to those people because of, without those people, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Without my family, without my friends, um, is the reason I have the mindset that I have. You know, I had a great upbringing and that really helped, helped centered me. I have a coach, which I think is very, very important. I have a life coach who keeps my mind sane, a, a business coach who keeps my business running, and then also exercising. You know, exercising makes me feel great about myself. It gives me that kind of, that energy to be able to go out there every single day and go, no limits today, no BS today, I'm just gonna give it my all. And because of that, you know, I've been able to be a lot more appreciative, appreciative of the ups and appreciative of the downs. Because I think the downs are the ones that I appreciate the most because those are the ones where I learn the most. Those are the ones that I learn about how to be a bit better business person and how to be a better human being. And here's the thing, so my throat's a little raspy, right? And so yesterday I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, you have a growth in your throat. We're gonna have to operate. And so for a month, I'm not gonna be able to talk. And I'm like, how the hell am I gonna do that? And you know, I did go into my car yesterday and I kind of teared up a little bit because this year has been so amazing for me and it's been, it's been fantastic. But then I thought, you know, there's a reason for this. I've always thought whenever there's a down, there's a reason for this and what can I learn from this? What, what am I to be able, I'm not gonna be able to talk so I'm gonna have to communicate in other ways. I'm not, I have to keep my business running, I have to keep my team running, I have to keep my clients happy, so how am I gonna do this? So this is an opportunity for me to learn about myself and, and also how to be a better person. Um, you know, we talked about social media. Um, I started this, uh, this YouTube uh, thing with my, I don't think that's the camera that I used to use, but I, I called it the Real Estate Minute. And I bring that up because in real estate, you know, we're always, uh, you know, we have our managers telling us, oh, you know, there's the cold calls and, you know, going on door knocking. And, and I thought, okay, what can I do differently? What, what is no one else doing? Because when everyone goes left, I'm like, I'm going right. Because I think that going right is, is a chance for opportunity and an opportunity, an opportunity for growth and an opportunity for success. Um, and I've been a huge believer of that. So um, a big thing that I want you guys to take away from today is um, the why. Um, my parents are everything to me. Um, my dad still has two jobs and my mom still has her job and they work like crazy. And my biggest why is I wanna be able to take my parents around the world. My parents have really never gone anywhere than the United States and Canada. I wanna show them the world. I, Cause they, because of them, I've been able to see the world myself and give other opportunities to other people like me who I could see the strive and, and the ambition and who probably don't have the means to do it. So, you know, what is your why? My why is on my desktop at home, it's at, at, at my office, it's on my wallet, why I'm waking up every single day to be the best that I could be so that I can give that life to my family one day. So, um, yeah, that's that's my story, and I, and I hope you guys got a little something out of it, and I'm just very happy to be here.